What's up, everybody, and welcome to my Impact Wrestling Review. Uh, a lot of things going on in this show tonight. Um, I think it's different this, different this time. What is it? Uh, Kissing Me, Florida, if I'm not mistaken. Um, as we are a few weeks away from Slammiversary, I see they did have a new opening intro for um, for Impact this week. Given that, you know, the 20th anniversary and we're getting closer to Slammiversary, um, I see why the intro looks a little bit of the older uh, TNA footage and, you know, current footage right now, because I'm sure some people... May have gotten tired of the, um, what was it? The, uh, we own the night, which is not a bad song, but even I kind of got tired of it after a while. Um, and wasn't that, hold on a second. But, uh, yeah, uh, with the new opening there for uh, Impact this week, we kicked it off with a uh, Ultimate X qualifier match between Alex Shelley and Trey Miguel. Very enjoyable match with these two. I thought it was a great banger to actually kick off this show to see who was going to make it in this match. I enjoyed this match. Uh, very technical. Yes, it's an X Division match, but um, more technical this time. Not the usual spot fest you would see. Uh, with uh, Alex Shelley or Trey Miguel, but a lot of selling, especially, you know, um, Shelley going for um, Miguel's leg, uh, focusing on that throughout the entire match. I enjoyed this match. I almost thought Shelley was actually going to win, uh, but Miguel ended up um, getting a win after hitting him with a crucifix roll-up, holding down um, Alex Shelley. Shelley ended up walking out on Miguel then after that, but Miguel does advance into the um, Ultimate X match coming up, uh, you know, for Slammiversary. And whatnot to see who's going to win the exhibition title. Uh, we already know Ace Austin's currently in the best of the Super Juniors, which I believe he is in the lead for the best of the Super Juniors now. He did beat Taji Shimori, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. So, hey, uh, Ace Austin's not doing bad over there in New Japan right now. <laughs> I've been watching the tournament, okay? So, um, I've been keeping up, and um, yeah, Ace is in the lead right now, folks. Uh, once you see what happens on Saturday, um, what goes down from there, but. Yeah, that's still been an enjoyable tournament so far. Uh, but yes, uh, Trey Miguel moves on into the Ultimate X match. Um, right after we did interview the um, Briscoe Brothers and Josh Alexander, talking about how they were going to take on uh, Violent by Design later tonight in, in the um, main event, a six-man tag. Um, as they talked about the match, uh, Gals and Anderson ended up walking up on the um, Briscoes then, um, basically saying, like, yeah, you've beaten a lot of teams right here, but you ain't have to beat the best. Briscoe said, y'all want a match? Y'all have a match then. Uh, right after, Masha Slamovich uh, went against Havoc. I guess you say, can say this is Masha Slamovich's, you know, one, I guess, official, you know, finally match, not a squash match going on, like they've done with everybody else um, and whatnot on Impact. But uh, in a way, this is a surprisingly squash match also. Havoc being a, you know, larger competitor against... Um, Masha, uh, Masha ended up taking down, uh, Havoc with the snowplow in, like, 90 seconds, uh, for the win, uh, which surprised all of Decay as Rosemary and them looked shocked over, um, Havoc losing so fast, but, uh, yeah, Slamovich, they have been very careful in, you know, building her up. Yes, they made her unstoppable, but, you know, they finally had her, um, you know, in a match, uh, I guess against someone current, you know, in an actual match, but then again, um, this was still a um, squash match at the same time. So they've been patient when building her up, not building her, you know, shooting her straight to the moon, but they've been very patiently building, um, uh, patiently building, uh, you know, Masha out there. So uh, I am liking what I see more and more, though. Uh, Trey Miguel was in the back celebrating, you know, high fiving um, Alex Shelley and Blake Christian, who I see is back in the company again. Kenny King walked up there and saying, like, you know, he's a veteran. You know, I'm one of the best X Division champions around. He's going to get the title back. Um, Christian says, You talk a lot. He says, How about a match? You know, you put your uh, shot on the line. Uh, King says, You know, nobody like you has a chance, but he agreed to the match next week, though. Rich Swan was talking about uh, Matt Cardona as he was going for the digital media title. Um, they say he's going to get payback on uh, Matthew Redwall next week. Uh, I don't know. Even, you know, it's kind of funny. A lot of people say this. Rich Swan really has fallen from grace, though, when you think about it. This guy was the world champion, but then he's really just kind of got relegated. Well, it was tag team, but Willie Mack ended up leaving. So, um, yeah, he's on his own fighting for a belt that doesn't really even matter, which I'll give Cardona credit trying to make it matter, you know, since the whole internet thing. But, yeah, Swan, this guy was the world champion in this company at one point, and now it's like um, he really has fallen from grace, if you ask me. Uh, Chelsea Green went against Jordan Grace. Um, 
not a bad match. Grace ended up getting the win uh, with the Grace Driver. Um, like I said, what, what a bad match out there uh, with her in green. So I don't really got much to say uh, about it. But uh, not a bad match, though. Honor No More was messed with Scott No More in the back. They didn't like what happened to uh, Maria last week. And they say, you know, it's an unsafe working environment. And they want to pay back on the Good Brothers. But they have a uh, match against the Briscoes at Sam Reversity for the titles. My Honor No More, you know, Eddie Edwards says, y'all don't get, uh, we don't get what we want. Nobody will and whatnot. Which, you know, Honor No More, um, I would say they're trying to get wins again. Because I feel like they really do need a lot of wins, if you ask me. They just kind of seem to be just around talking and losing a lot. So... This is the last we heard of them throughout the night. Um, Deanna Perrazzo was kind of promo on uh, Mia Yim in the back. Uh, basically being interviewed, uh, talking about everybody that shows up here tries to make a name for themselves by my expense. But Tasha Steele and Savannah Evans showed up saying like, listen, okay, you know, I was the uh, first woman to win a Ultimate X match. And uh, we, may, we, may, we may not be friends, but we got the common enemy in Mia Yim. Listen, Savannah's going to take her on next week. You know, there's an open spot for, you know, commentary, you know, if you want to come down ringside and check it out. Because we can take care of this problem before this problem even starts. So, um, we'll see what happens from there. Chris Saban went against Frankie Kazarian. Uh, crazy, you know, a lot of people say these guys were on Impact uh, 20 years ago and whatnot at this time. Um, and whatnot. They, they, they were there, folks. They, they were there. Um, and it's kind of crazy where they are right now. Uh, still, it can still go, still, uh, somewhat the same in a way, but, um, a lot of people say, yeah, these guys been on Impact, uh, for years, some would say, too, both of them are TNA originals when you look at it, uh, both Chris Saban and Frankie Kazarian, so, um, they were there somewhat near the beginning, and, you know, they've been there throughout years, um, in and on in different companies, but, in a way, they both started off in Impact and Ring of Honor, too, but, you know, they really did start off, I would say, start in Impact, that's how I knew when I started watching these guys, um, you know, the Marcy Machine Guns, you know, uh, Kazarian in general is, you know, impact. That's when I first started watching these guys. But, you know, very good match in general until Honor No More came out and attacked both of them. So, um, maybe they'll be facing them ne next after that. So, uh, we'll see what happens. But as they talked about everything that went down, um, down and after that, uh, you know, they, uh, Heath and Rhino showed up, basically arguing with them, and they end up almost brawling with security getting involved. Uh, Raj Singh and Shira went against, um, W. Morrissey and, uh, Bupinder Guhar. I don't have much to say about this match. I feel like Morrissey should be in a better spot than where he is right now. I still think he should be the one facing Josh Alexander for the title at Slammiversary. It's not like this match was the worst thing, but I feel like Morrissey should be doing something bigger. It's like they're trying to get the, uh, Bupinder guy over and maybe, you know, trying using Morrissey to kind of give it a boost or something. But it's, you know... It's not much I can say uh, from this. You know, him, you know, Morrissey and Bupinder won. But I feel like, like I said, I think Morrissey should be doing something better. Um, right after that then, uh, Macklin, not Macklin, but uh, Moose is being interviewed because him and Steve Macklin will be going against Morrissey and um, PCO next week. Macklin says you need to get Sammy Callahan out of your head and whatnot. Because, um, you know, Moose talked about how he took him out. He said he's not in my head. And the next thing you know, all this distorted stuff starts going around, and Moose is paranoid, and Macklin says, you need to get him out of your head. Violent, but in the main event, it was Violent by Design versus Josh Alexander and the Briscoe Brothers. Uh, you know, insane tag match. Very enjoyable. Uh, obviously, they got to find a way to get Eric Young over and get some heat on him, which he did, you know, using a hockey mask and stuff. Um... You know, uh, and didn't doing the power driver onto Mark Briscoe for the win. Uh, I'm sh like I said, you know, I I like Eric Young, but some would wonder: Do you really want him in the main event of Slammiversary against, um, you know, Josh Alexander? I get he's a TNA original. I know it's the 20th year anniversary, and I like Eric Young, but you know, Violent by Design. I just felt like I liked them at first, but I feel like they just kind of been up and down. They haven't really done much to be as powerful as they kind of were in the get-go in the beginning. And then they spent a lot of time facing Heath and Rhino also, which in a way somewhat brought them down. And they just kind of just kind of be around just to be around uh, cutting random promos and took a lot of L's at some point. But um, yeah, I, I feel like, I, I don't know. Like I said, I know it won't be a bad match this anniversary, but it's like, do I really, I, I just don't think Eric Young really has any chance of beating um Josh Alexander, so they're trying to get some type of heat on him to, you know, make him look strong, but still, I don't think this should be the main event for Slammiversary. But other than that, uh, that's my review of Impact this week. Comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Hooded9890. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys then.
Peace.